Hello everyone and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Will Schick, head of studio for Atomic Mass Games, and today I get to kick off the most exciting of months. That's right, it is Cyclops and the X-Men. So we're going to be diving into our mutant releases, which come out next month in November. Uh, and we're going to start things off with, of course, the first class X-Man, the leader of X-Men Blue. We're going to start off with Scott Summers, Cyclops. So let's get the camera off of me and hop on to our miniature that we're going to be painting today. So here's our Cyclops in glorious Zenith Prime. So you can see this guy has not missed leg day at all. In fact, he goes to the gym every day, being one of the Xavier Institute's primary teachers and uh, students. So he is very cut, and we're going to have a lot of fun painting uh, Mr. Cyclops here. I'm going to be going for traditional colors. I know that we uh, have Spooktacular as our painting challenge, and a lot of times we like to paint on the stream. With the painting challenge thing, Dallas did an amazing kickoff with his Taskmaster last week and painting him in Spooktacular colors. I thought about maybe doing uh, the red-suited like homage to the... Xavier School um, Cyclops from some of the not really recent now, but the AVX runs and things like that when he had the red suit because <clears throat> it is pretty spooky, but I think we're just going to go traditional. I think everyone wants to see how to paint blue and yellow uh, like we're going to do today, so we're just going to stick with classic colors from the 90s, and in order to do that, we're going to start off with this Mediterranean blue, which is just a really nice sharp mid-tone blue. We're going to turn that into a little bit of a wash, like we like to do, using a little bit of water, a little bit of glaze medium. And that is how we're going to kick things off. So I hope you guys, gals, and other people all across the world had a wonderful weekend. And that you're staying safe and staying productive, having a lot of fun hobbying, all that good stuff. I got a little bit of work done over the weekend of my hobby stuff. It was pretty exciting, but mostly I just played games. There's a lot of gaming going on in my house. Which is always a joy in my opinion, so. All right, we're gonna get a little glazed medium in there just to mix it up, test it out. And remember when you're doing this stuff, <clears throat> you're looking for a fairly thin consistency because we are doing this more like a wash. We want it to, when all the cracks and stuff, I'm just gonna try this out. I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to start applying this. I'm going to be careful not to get any of this on the yellow parts if I can avoid it. But if I do, it's really not a big deal. So we're just kind of going to go slow and steady. So we apply this, letting it run, letting that Zenith Prime do a lot of the work for us. Like here. Some knee pads will probably get a little spillover, but that's okay. I'm take my other brush and kind of just blend it out, just like that. This side, really just letting that paint run into those cracks and crevices there. This is really thin, it wants to do it. We are going to be giving him the classic yellow undies on the outside because it's just not, it's not classic Jim Lee Cyclops without yellow, yellow undies on the outside. So that's what we're doing. It's where we're going with it. Hope everyone's excited. I know last month we did a lot of Criminal Syndicate and Daredevil painting, and that was a blast. And those are hitting your store shelves, I think, this week. So I've seen a few people post that they have them out there, and I'm sure everyone else will be getting them real soon. Excited to see what everyone does with those as well. Dallas is painting while watching because he's got a big project to finish. He can't talk about it though. It's a secret. <laughs> we're just kind of taking our time on this blue, making sure that we're getting in all the right areas. And I'm just trying to save myself a little bit of effort when it comes to the yellow by not getting a lot of blue on the white. I'm not going to do a wash for the yellow, but when I do paint my yellow, it's going to be a lot easier to try to not 
fight necessarily with a lot of blue overspill. And again, this is why that secondary brush is really nice because you get a little damp and you can just kind of wick away any of your paint, especially when you're working with really thin paints like we are here with the wash. And the goal is just let that zenith really do its job so that we can make things easy on ourselves and get our characters on the tabletop with as much effort as we want to put into them, but still have them look fabulous. So see I'm going, I'm also really attempting to do really nice and even coats here. So. So I don't want to have too thick of a coat. I don't want to have too thin. I want it to be nice and smooth and even and that's what's going to really help that. Zenith Prime really sing. And save me a bit of effort in terms of the shading department. Oh, let me see, I missed a Z here, so let's go back through and get that. Get right here. I think do that path in blue. I don't think that's... A couple of differences from some of the costumes you might see. He's got these kind of like nice knee pads and elbow pads. I'm just going to hit those with blue for right now because I don't think those want to be yellow. So we're not going to make them yellow. Also got some cool shoulder pads on this guy, which could be blue, could be yellow. I think we'll probably make them yellow. Maybe. We'll decide. I like blue a lot, though. So maybe we'll just make them blue. I'm just going to rock things out. Uh, you can, so you can use any paint right from the bottle of Vermasterson, I'm oh, sorry, Vec, Marston, um, I gotta look up and like actually read. You can use any paint from the bottle, but you really shouldn't. Um, you're gonna get the best results if you thin with a little bit of water, at least like loosen the paint is Dallas's term that I've adopted. If you just want it to be loose, you want it to flow off the brush nice. Um, it's also going to help you not obscure detail. It's going to make your coverage really smooth. So um, now the way that I'm thinning this paint in order to do kind of this pin wash um, Zenith Prime technique is way more than you really should thin a paint if you're just going for a normal base coat. Um, but yeah, you should, it's always good practice to do a little bit of thinning just to get that paint nice, paint nice and loose so it flows off the brush really nice. You have a lot of good control because um, letting the capillary action of the paint actually help you. I'm gonna swap my brushes here. Um, it's also going to help you with like your detail and your control and all that stuff. So you're going to have a lot easier bit. You're going to have a lot easier of a time if your paint is flowing smooth. And the way to get it to do that is definitely to thin it out. And you'll notice that each paint is different even within the same line. So some paints just have a heavier pigment. Sometimes paints don't get as much medium in them when they're mixed up at the factory. There's a lot of different reasons for that. So it becomes kind of like a, how much do you want to salt your steak? Um, there are, you'll develop kind of a style and technique, but then it's also just going to be by taste. You're just going to kind of know as you paint and, and put the paint off the brush and feel it flow whether you've thinned it enough to where you're going to get the results that you want. Um, so definitely don't get discouraged or anything like that as you work at it. Always start with less liquid than more and just kind of, I always like to use my thumb. You know, it's a great test canvas to see if your paint is flowing smooth, if everything's good. Um, when you're doing a wash, your thumbnail's really great because it'll give you kind of the hint of like how much translucency do you have. 
How's it stretching over that surface and is it tinting and all of that? It'll tell you if it's a wash or a glaze. And then for like a base coat paint or a highlight paint, um, you can definitely just kind of go back to using um, your thumb, the skin on your thumb, and you'll be able to feel as well as watch how that paint flows off. Um, so it's good to kind of do both. So just get your thumbs dirty. It's a really great tool that's right there for you whenever you need it. And uh, that way everyone knows what you've been doing. Like what my wife always knows when I come downstairs if I've been painting or assembling because if I'm painting my thumbs are typically covered in paint. Especially going back in the pre-COVID days when we used to meet up with people and stuff you'd go like go to dinner with people or like go to a work function your thumbs like covered in paint and everyone's like what happened especially if you're painting with red looks like you have like gnarly cuts it was great all right so we have a decision to make and if we want to hit those shoulder pads with blue or yellow i think i'm gonna go with I think I'm going to go with yellow just to give them a bit of extra color build. And I'll give some extra color. So there's our blue laid down. Now, honestly, at this point, you could just stop and be done. You see that we got really nice shadows and stuff from the zenith. So we're darker in the crevices. We're nicer on the top. So we could just call it good here. There are a couple things that I want to still do with it. Like, I think we should deepen some shadows and maybe put a bit of more highs on there. But we'll wait for that blue to dry because it is a little thin. So it's going to take a little bit before it is ready to go again. So we'll move on to our yellow. Again, when painting yellow, like we've talked about before, um, you really wanna start with a nice ochre rather than a primary yellow. So we're gonna start with Sahara yellow, which you can see um, is not a primary. It's definitely more of an ochre uh, on, on the further yellow side. But that's just gonna make everything go down a lot nicer. And it's gonna give us better coverage. And at the end of the day, yellow, a lot like white, because it's such a bright color, is more defined by its shadows than its highlights. So you can put just a very little bit of primary yellow as your highlight. And as long as you have a nice yellow foundation, you're still gonna get a very nice yellow look. Um, and you can change kind of how primary or or the feel, the flavor of your yellow just by simply changing out how much primary yellow highlight is there and all of that. We're gonna obviously be going for some pretty punchy stuff, so we'll probably use a little bit of yellow ink um, as a glaze to really highlight and make those yellows pop and feel very vibrant. That's another really great trick that you can use is you can thin, we're talking about thinning paints. Um, one of the things that you can do that works really, really well you have access to some really nice inks is you can actually thin your paints with inks and what this does is it not only loosens the paint like we talked about but those inks will actually punch up the color intensity and I think Dallas has a YouTube video that was from Gen Con he did a little class at Gen Con that was basically entitled um, poppy colors or punchy colors it was all about how you get really good vibrant colors um, on your miniatures and from how you paint and stuff. And one of the big tricks there is to use inks when you mix and thin your paints. And those inks, again, will just really up the vibrancy of the color as well as help you thin out the paints. So you can you could easily mix in some like yellow ink into this ochre and that would punch it up. Um, what we'll probably wind up doing is we'll do some highlighting and, and stuff and then we will use a yellow glaze over the top of it and that'll just tie everything together and give us a really nice yellow pop um, hopefully we'll be able to get there within the hour but we'll see so. and I'm I didn't switch out my brush like I probably should have Let me get the bigger brush because I don't need the little brush for this, this is just ridiculous this is silly don't don't use tiny brushes for big areas. That's a trick. 
you want to speed up your painting. Uh, right brush for the right job. So you can get a lot of good control even with a big brush as long as you maintain your point really nice. Of course, as I say that, totally mash everything together. But I do want to be a little careful now that I have that blue down. Um, because if I get yellow on it, I'll have to go back and fix it, and that'll just be extra work that I'd rather avoid if I can. So let's take a little bit of time as we get closer to that blue. And it's probably gonna take two coats of this ochre, even though we're painting over a nice light gray and it's a pretty strong color. Um, yellows are just like that, whites are just like that. A lot of colors really demand um, two coats and that's going to give you nice and smooth results so don't try to do things in one instead always thinks in twos and threes so um, don't be afraid to do three coats if they're nice and thin and smooth you're just going to build up those color layers it's going to look a lot nicer <gasps> here we go the exciting part we're going to paint we're going to paint some yellow undies i think that would be really uncomfortable wear your underwear on the outside. Yeah, you can use skin tones for your yellows. You can use them to highlight yellows. Um, if you have really nice like flesh washes that you like or inks that you use to shade skin, um, you can use those on yellows pretty well. So there's a lot of tricks to painting yellow. It's just kind of finding the ones that work best for you and the ones you like. I found my most success like and the most fun that I have with yellows, which to me is the most important part when I'm painting, is what is enjoyable. Because like this guy's not going to a competition. He's not he's not doing anything but, you know, making me happy. He's gonna go on the tabletop and battle probably some Brotherhood of Mutants. And maybe join some Brotherhood of Mutants from time to time. And then he's gonna sit on my shelf and he's gonna look cool, along with all my other miniatures that I've painted, so um, it's important to me that I get good results, but what's even more important is that I'm having fun while I'm getting him painted. And, you know, there's like, I really like dry brushing. I think that's super fun. So anytime I can dry brush something, I'm all in. And I know that certain people have different feelings on dry brushing. But to me, it's just a really fun technique. So I love painting like, you know, rocks and scenery and things like that or things with really heavy texture like furs because i can use a dry brush on it and dry brush to me is just like magic because you start with this brush that has like no color on it and then as you do successive and successive layers all of a sudden you see these colors start to shift and it's just really fun and cool and it's a really easy and quick technique and you get these really fun results and so that's like that's a huge part of you know how you should paint if you like two brush blending because that's enjoyable to you, you should learn that and do it. And if you like dry brushing or if you like base coat layer, base coat wash layer highlight, like do that. Um, and you'll find different techniques work better for different colors and that's good too. Like I really like painting purple. Purple is probably one of my most favorite colors to paint. I just find it really enjoyable and rewarding and it's a neat color to work with and it's really fun to play with and blues are not too far behind like I really like blues so a lot of the times when I choose a color scheme or pick a, a group to paint or whatever it's like well are they blue are they purple can I make them blue can I make them purple because those are the colors I really like I avoid yellows because yellows were always struggles for me and um, I just didn't find yellow that enjoyable until I kind of like developed the technique that I find that gives me a lot of success. So I didn't, I didn't pick those. Dallas really likes painting white. I think he's crazy. I've gotten better at white, but it's still not my favorite color to paint. But you know, he's often the first person that I throw under the bus for whites because he really likes painting white. Alright. And 
so we just keep on keeping on. It's the other great thing about Cyclops and a lot of the X-Men is they're typically only two colors, so you kind of just get a zone in and work really close. On the one versus the other. That armor plate is really close to that yellow. I might have changed my mind. We might go back. spill there. Secondary brush, use it. It's great. It is a wonderful tool to just correct mistakes really quick. So you don't have to go back and repaint it. And it's just, you know, I like to keep it mostly because I learned from Dallas, you know. I like to hold my brush in my mouth, which is why I talk funny on these things. Because then it's immediately there. It's really easy to get to. Um, like again, make a mistake, scrub it away, but it, it really will significantly impact kind of your ability to correct mistakes, to not have to go back and repaint areas. Um, and it makes you bolder because you know, you know, you know that you have an eraser. I mean, I think the pouches are just there for style. You know, they just balance out the outfit. It's like on a lot of really fancy pants. They have pockets, but the pockets aren't deep enough to hold anything in because they're just there for the look. Sometimes it's about the ensemble look. You just, you just want to make sure that you're, you know, dressing the part. And as we all know, the superhero costume uh, we're gonna make the visor gold or are we gonna go yellow? We'll come back to it. <laughs> the jury's out. I got a lot of decisions to make. A lot more decisions than I thought I was gonna have to make on this guy. Cyclops is your second favorite Marvel character. I love it. That yellow going down. Again, we're going to go back to the eraser brush because we got a little too excited on that side, so. Well, you can kind of see like just how useful that brush is and the fact that it's allowing me to really quickly address when I get a little too overzealous with the paint application or if it goes in places I don't want it to. You can very quickly fix it. So this is another like really good example of why thinning your paints is great um, because it can be really hard to draw these straight lines that are going on here with these belts but if your paint flows nicely off the brush you don't actually have to draw the line you can just kind of like do a quick touch and the paint will flow off and it will stick right as you got your flow right to the spot that you want because the paint knows what it wants to do. So sometimes you just got to trust, trust the brush, trust the paint. They're working for you, not against you, you know. Um, so you can, you can have a lot more control because you're not trying to artificially draw straight lines. Kind of trust that paint's going. And you can already see how, probably based on how much I'm having to how much I'm having to paint a little bit and like my paint is starting to dry out a little bit because I don't use a wet palette. 
I just use a well. And so I always have to like pay attention and check. Like, do I need to add a little bit more water to my paint? Like is my flow starting to stick? You also really want to clean your brush a lot because the paint's going to dry on your brush. So typically by about the th second or third time you're loading your paint up with your brush up with more paint, you should go back to your water and clean it out to make sure that the paint on your brush isn't drying because that's going to obviously affect your control and your flow and all of that stuff. So. It's just going to be a video of techniques. A sleeve of Thin Mints, there's no way that you get a physique like Cyclops is by eating Girl Scout cookies. Like that just ain't happening. And high metabolism was not one of his superpowers. So like maybe he's burning a whole lot of like calories from the, the optic blast. But given that they come from another dimension, I think, was the explanation given? It's probably not true. His eyes truly are windows to, well, a hellish landscape of apparently concussive force, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. He's got glasses for that. All right, so there's our first coat of yellows laid down. We need to make a decision now. About what to do with those shoulder pads. Let's go to the tape. And see how our amazing studio painter man, Brendan, did them. Ooh, scary. Yeah, so we just did them blue. So I think we're gonna do them blue. We're gonna we're gonna copy. So I'm gonna go back to my blue, which is still nice and ready. We'll just lay some paint right over the shoulders. Is there still audio? I hope so. I'm just being really quiet. There we go. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's the subject of quite heavy debate as to what kind of attack type Cyclops' eye blast should be because they're often described as concussive force. But of course they look like lasers. So, you know, they, that's, what, that's what days at the comic book store were made of, right? Discussing different creative team takes and inputs and should it be this, should it be that? Well, in this issue it was like this, but in this issue it's like that. It's true. If you're gonna play, if you're gonna play Scott Summers, you gotta get ready to go, Jane. Josh is really good at it. I wish Josh was here. He could do it right now on command. He loves, he loves the Gene, and he loves making the Professor X anguished. Uh, what was it called? The Mindscape. It's not the Mindscape. The Astral Plane. The Astral Plane, like mental anguish noise. 
I can't do it as well. I'm I'm not as I'm not as talented as Josh. I'm gonna hit those boots one more time. Um, is there a reason I don't start with inner layers like flesh? I think it's an aversion thing because much like I've talked about other things I don't like painting, I really am not a huge fan of painting skin. Um, so I kind of just leave it to the end, uh, partially because it's like the broccoli on my plate that I just have to do. Um, so instead of like finishing it off first, I eat everything that I like, and then I force myself to finish the plate. But the other reason is, is because I don't like doing it that much. Um, when I started out painting, you know, my brush control wasn't nearly as obviously good as it is 20 plus years later. And, uh, so I made a lot of mistakes. So if I spent a whole lot of time on the face of the miniature or the inside, like the inside out mentality, right? Um, then if I made a mistake as I worked my way out, I would have to go back and I would have to do the thing that I liked the least. So what I wound up doing is effectively I go really big like common areas and I get all those done and then I go to the more detail oriented areas like the face or the straps or anything like that. Um, and it just works for me and it's kind of just like my little tick. I've read and watched a lot of really great um, painters and stuff who do it the other way. I think, you know, it's like whatever, again, it's whatever brings you the most enjoyment and stuff. And for me, like doing the face is just kind of like the last little bit of everything that I do. Um, it's also like, I think people have pointed out that if you watch how I paint stuff, I almost always start with the pants first. Cause to me, like pants just are the first thing you paint. I don't know why that's just where I go. <laughs> Like, even on this blue suit, I think I started on Cyclops' leg first, so I put his pants on. So, yeah, that's, um, that's really just me. Like, I think it's just, uh, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no hidden recipe. It's just, like, that's how I do it, you know? Um, same thing, like, when I cook, I don't prep all my ingredients. I, I do them as I go, so I don't want to do all those dishes. So I'm like one cutting board, one knife, chop an ingredient, throw it in, rinse everything off, chop the next ingredient. Um, I don't put everything in like 40 bowls and then I'm just like, all right, now I'm ready to cook. That's, nope. That's just not, it's not my personality. It's not my, it's not how I workflow. Like, you know, you learn so many like weird things about yourself and your hobbies and how you approach things and how you kind of break down tasks and uh, everyone kind of does it different. Uh, do I want that visor to be gold? Man, this is a tough choice here. <laughs> Dallas. I mean, let's be honest, Dallas. You always knew that I was a monster. We're gonna do we're gonna do yellow because it's really easy to go gold over it if we don't like it. So we're gonna we're gonna do the visor. We're gonna do the visor right now. Oh. Oh, I think I'm kind of liking it. I think I'm kind of liking it. I think yellow might have been the right choice, kids. I think solid yellow instead of the gold is the right choice. We'll save the gold for Phoenix Force Scott Summers, which was a cool design. But I think that was my favorite Cyclops, actually, was, was when they were the Phoenix Five, which sounds like a terrible band from the 80s. But I loved, I loved that look with the sharper like bird-like visor faceplate thing going on and stuff. That was really cool. There we go. All right. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm digging this. I think we can go back to that blue and we'll do a little bit of shading. Um, oop. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fix our mistake here. Shoop. All right, so here we go. 
Those are blues. There's our yellows. Everything's looking pretty good. Take down our lights just a little bit. So the camera isn't blowing it all out. So, yeah. So, already, I mean, you can kind of see, like, like we always like to say on here, um, if you did the hair and you did the face and then the little X symbols and, of course, finished off the base, like, I would call this miniature ready for the tail top. Like, it, it's good. We can, we can make choices here to amp it up like we could do a wash on the yellow we could do a little highlighting on the yellow we can take this as many stages as we want but just knowing like where you want to go with it um and how far you want to go with it like this is great i would love to see this across the table i would be proud to put this on the table and play with it um and you can see like it's it's a really simple process so our blues are already shaded because of that zenith, our yellows even have a little bit of shading, even though we didn't do a traditional wash with them because of that zenith. Um, like this guy's ready. So don't feel like you have to go further than kind of just getting color on the miniature and you'd be great. We're going to keep going, though, um, because it's fun and I've got, I've got time and we should just do it because it's going to be great. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up. I'm going to use some cyan ink tents. Now, this is a really punchy blue. Um, it's not as dark, so it's a cyan, so it's more like the color that we used, that Mediterranean blue, than the blue ink, which is not violet ink, because that'd be weird. So here's the blue ink. So you could use either. It really depends on the tone that you want out of your blue. So I want a really punchy, like, sky blue, because that to me, that's like what the X-Men blue and yellow is. But if you look at images, right, um, dark blues and, and deeper shades of blue are obviously there. So either one um, you could use. This is going to tone down our blue a lot and bring it more towards like a, a darker blue or a, a royal blue kind of spectrum. Um, this one, in my experience, because it's so punchy and bright, is just kind of going to like pop our vibrancy. Um, and so that's what I want here. So that's what I'm going to use. And the cyan is also the color I was talking about that I really like to mix in with blues. Um, if I want them to be extra punchy when I thin them out. Uh, again, with the ink, you need to mix it with water and mixing medium. Don't use it straight out of the pot. They're, like, way too powerful. They'll just, like, take over your world. So you want to thin this down pretty good. And then we're just going to kind of, like, wash. We're going to wash this into our shadows. And it's just going to give us that extra bit of definition that we really want. That looks pretty good. And so hopefully you can kind of see, I mean, in without the camera, it's really powerful in terms of just how it, like, tints the surface. Let's see if I take this light Oop, down, not up. I'm going to go here. Um, so this is just going to add that extra punch. And it's a wash that's going to run into my recesses and stuff. And I've got to be really careful um, because it does like to pool. And if you let it pool, it's going to look really, really ugly. So you got to make sure that when you're doing washes and stuff, especially washes that you've made out of inks, um, that you're keeping them very thin and you're keeping them very controlled. And you want them to pool a little bit, but you don't want them to, like, puddle. So you want them to, like, wash into the crevices and, and collect a bit more in there, because that's what's going to give you your nice shading. But you don't want big puddles, because when they dry, um, they're going to go opaque on you. And they're going to look really ugly. And it's not going to be what you want. So, again, it's just playing with that control. Um, making sure that you're keeping them nice and thin. And we're just kind of tinting the surface. And again, we're trying to stay away from those yellows. And if we mess up, I've got my brush in my hand, so we can just take care of that like right away. Right. 
that's what it's feeling like. One's in here. Yeah, I definitely think if I was to do a second Cyclops, I would totally go with that new Xavier school. Darker reds. I think the Jim Lee costume would work pretty well with that. Um, wouldn't give him the, the man underwear, though, on the outside. I'd probably just whoop. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. I'd probably just make it all one solid color, and it would look perfectly fine. And obviously, if you don't want to do the yellow underwear on this guy, you just want to do like blue and the blue and yellow, but without the exterior underwear, you could. It just wouldn't be Cyclops, though. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like with Taskmaster. It just feels sacral. We had a lot of discussions on Tasty. Um, fewer on Cyclops, actually, about whether or not we wanted to have the underwear on the outside and didn't feel right to like not have it for people who wanted to do it um, but we did do it in a way that like you can kind of just not paint it white and it still just looks like part of the suit and it's the same here with Mr. Summers like you definitely have that option but the traditionalist in me just says you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do it you gotta go all the way No half ends the river. Just just dive in. I was never one to get acclimated to uh, the lake. I was like, just jump in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. So our first layer wash, you can kind of see already how it's like really started to deepen up these recesses. We've got our highs and stuff. We've tinted our color a bit down. And all right, so let's do the same thing on our yellows and give them a quick wash. Um, so we're going to use, we're gonna make our own because we don't really have an orange, but I want this to be a little tinted orange. So we're gonna use uh, Ink Tense Yellow. We're gonna use probably a little Ink Tense Crimson. And we're gonna kind of like make up a little bit of a, a yellow orange. Um, just to tint things down. Now again, you could use like more of a flesh wash with more browns in it or reds. Um, it all depends on the yellow that you want, but because we're gonna go to like kind of a punchy primary yellow, I don't want this to be too, too dark and deep. Um, if I was gonna keep kind of like this ochre color as my overall um, high, that would probably be fine. But I think we wanna take this, I think we wanna take this yellow up a bit more, so going to kind of get it in there and again this is going to do a little bit of tonal shifting as well because we've got that yellow and that red so whoop. as long as we don't pull some of that blue ink with us which is certainly possible as you can see here it's kind of the danger of going too fast over these areas nature of the stream Just be a little careful around those edges but yeah so we're gonna shift all of that stuff and get it nice and going and we'll go back and catch those areas a little later hair dryer that's another really great tool if you want to continue to paint fast and you're using a lot of washes or glazes and stuff um, those hair dryers are going to make sure that you can blaze through without drying worrying about too much about drying times for example you got to be kind of careful around the belt and then those uh, straps and stuff because that blue is still really fresh so we might not hit those right now we might just come back to them later and we just did it so now we have green i don't know if you know this but yellow and blue make green so because we're not quite dry yet we'll just hit 
his other glove, and then I'll come back to the torso in a second. Translucent Hot Toys Iron Man. I have not seen this translucent Iron Man that you speak of. It sounds pretty cool, though. pulling all kinds of stuff over here. I just all right. So let's go ahead and jump to his face and his hair. Oh yeah, food dehydrator, that'd do the trick. Alright. So we're gonna grab Grab our skin tone, which I like to use a little bit of this Ishtar pink. And then I like to mix it with some of the, where is it? I just have to find it. There we go. Some of the basic flesh. And I just kind of make a mix that I think looks pretty good. Um, because working with skin tones and stuff, you definitely have a lot of places to explore and play. And everybody's got kind of like different hues and pigments. So find your peach, find kind of like your brown and go from there. So go in. Can't see what I'm doing because I'm off camera. Oops, doodle. See, this is the kind of face that I like to paint. Most of it's covered. It's beautiful. It's the best part about superheroes. A lot of them still wear masks. Is that going on? Let that dry. Look at the hair really quick. Uh, he's got kind of a really brown hair. We'll use, what do we use for that? That's probably too red. It's way too red. Try a little bit of this chestnut. So I'm just gonna use this chestnut and we'll see how that treats us. And maybe we'll add a little Tindalos red to it because it doesn't look red enough, but Tindalos red is like way too red. Kind of want to make an auburn here. Let's mix up on the fly. That's eh, probably a little more red, but that's okay. I think that'll work out pretty well. So what I'm going to lay down is just like a half and half mix of Tindalos and Chestnut. And then what we'll do is we'll tint it back down with some brown ink. Once we get to that point. And I didn't really intend to make it a wash consistency. Um, this happens to be going on with a bit of translucency, which is okay. You can play with that. There's a lot of good texture on the hair anyway, so it's pretty easy to do. Actually, I feel like that's coming out pretty well. One little brown wash over that once it dries is gonna look great. Let's get the hair going on. There. So there's that. 
I think we can take this guy at least over the tabletop finish line. Um, we're going to grab some white. We'll get that visor going. So this color is just white snow, which is like a slightly off white. I'm like building up a few layers of this. I'm gonna let that dry. Let me get the icons. There we go. So we got that white in there. which is just going to serve as a nice, if you watched any of Dallas's stuff on Glow, having that white to start is a really nice way to get a nice vibrant glow. And then you can just use some inks or washes and build that up. Or I go to, I'm going to use actually black metal, I think. Because um, I don't want, flat black for my X symbol because that would be weird so Let's get the symbol in there Let's get the belt because it is also black with red that stuff Whoop. and then we just have to get the red in and we need to do the red for the eyeballs so I'm going to use crimson for that with the ink tents and we're going to grab some of this red so we're grabbing that's nonsense. We're going to grab uh, Ball Crimson from Fantasy, from the Fantasy line on scale. And we're just going to go in. We're going to dot in a little red. And this would be entirely optional at this point if we're just looking to get this guy tabletop ready, but why not? We're here. Let's do it. You could punch that up as much as you wanted to, but. You now see that we have that red tinge in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that ball crimson. I'm going to take a little bit of my crimson ink. I'm going to mix those two together. Because I want that ink to have just a little bit more hold than it would otherwise. Let's grab that, and we will go ahead and cross the visor. Easy peasy. There's our red. So really, I mean, at this point, there is our Cyclops ready for the tabletop. A little, little over sploosh on him with the blue ink, but that would be super easy to clean up. Let's just do that now. There we go. So, off some of that glare from that back. 
So there is our Scott Summers, basically tabletop ready, good to go. We got the blues on there, really nice. Uh, the yellows, we did some washing on the yellows, so we go back and have this we want. The visor's good. The hair came out actually really nice. Um, we'll clean up where we had our inks mix up, but that's pretty easy. And I missed the symbol on the back. Shh, nobody will know. Nobody looks. Nobody looks at the back of your miniatures. So, yep, that is Cyclops in about an hour. There are definitely things that I'll be going uh, further on with this miniature, so I'm definitely going to go back. I'm going to punch up the yellows. I want them to be a bit more primary. Um, I'll do some cleanup and mess with it. But again, because we were so close. We definitely just wanted to take an opportunity to show you that, again, you can get really great looking results depending on how far you want to go with it. To get them on the tabletop and start blasting fools with optic devastations and beams and whatever, whatever he does. So, there you go. And with that, I think we will whoop, switch this over. And... So hope you guys, gals, and people out there all loved uh, seeing Cyclops get some paint on him. You're inspired to figure out uh, how you want to do your own when he releases this November with the rest of the X-Men. Uh, it was a really fun character to design. We had, a, we had a blast just figuring out how he slotted into the team. Of course, one of the big things with the X-Men was coming up with the two leader affiliations right off the gate. So Mr. Scott Summers leads X-Men Blue and Storm leads X-Men Gold. Uh, each leadership ability is unique and offers a different play style of the team, which is really fun uh, and was neat to kind of dive into like who the X-Men are, how they function, and what each leader kind of brings through their personality to each of their different teams. And of course, they're all just part of the Uncanny X-Men, so you can play them all together. Um, really exciting stuff, fun times, uh, and I'm excited to see everyone start to get the looks as Josh starts releasing cards, spoilers, and all that good stuff. Um, which we will not be doing today, of course. Um, we are just here to paint some really awesome looking miniatures and have some fun talking and chatting about the hobby. So remember, uh, join in with the painting with us. We have our October challenge for hashtag painting protocol, which is spooky. So give us your best Halloween themed October spooky color schemes, uh, characters, whatever, from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Whatever you deem spooky, put it up there, hashtag painting protocol. Uh, we're going to be announcing the staff picks from the last uh, painting protocol, which was the Spider-Verse? Spider-Verse, I think. Yeah, it was Spider-Verse. Spider-Friends and Foes. Um, and that will be happening soon as well, so watch for that. And be sure to join Dallas at 1 p.m. Pacific this Thursday as he starts his own X-Men painting journey. I believe that he will be painting Sabretooth. So if you want to see Victor Creed, uh, Wolverine's arch nemesis, uh, get some paint on him and just see how Dallas approaches that, whether he's going to go classic colors, whether he's going to do something completely off the wall, who knows. Uh, it's always a joy. We love hanging out with you all, and we hope that you stay safe, have fun, continue to hobby, continue to post pictures of your games, anything else hobby-related that you're doing. We'd love to see that on social media. And be sure to check out the website for all the latest and greatest information in terms of what's coming next for Marvel Crisis Protocol. And otherwise, thank you very much for joining me. I will see you all on the next one. Goodbye.